I don't expect that everyone's going to have the same ardor for the sport that I had. Uh, you know, I'm sure there's some that have more. I'm, you know, like uh, uh, Candido and Cornette, right? They could t- 25 hours a day talking about wrestling. I love wrestling. I can talk about it a good chunk, but I also like to talk about other things, the weather and my kids. And uh, which, by the way, I went to my son's, uh, had their first ever concert in Pittsburgh. Dando Vanes played their first uh, gig in their hometown uh, Thursday night. And a uh, person was there from a radio station and, you know, gave me some some information for them and stuff. So it, pretty exciting. Anyway, mm-hmm. uh, but with Ultimate Warrior, uh, yeah, there's this mindset that he wasn't saying as in love with the business to say like something like I was. Um, but I think, you know, and I could see there were times when Steve would be off putting to or not Steve, uh, uh, Jim would be off putting to people, you know, but to me that it always seemed like that was a, like a defensive shield. Um, that he, he, you know, you walk into those dressing rooms, especially back then, you go Jake Roberts and you know, this litany of just amazing talents around and you're under the ring and shaking the ropes. Right. So you're, you're very well aware of who's better than you in that dressing room. And, it, it, you know, there's, and there's always this perennial, you know, ongoing thought that I'm never going to be as good as Harley. I'm never going to be as good as steam, but I'm never going to be as good as this person or that person. And I think that was, Jim's sort of wall to put it up there, like to cut it in between that. I don't think it was that he disliked the business or uh, whatever. The business can be, as we've talked about many times on the show, incredibly intimidating, especially when that young, young person walking in there. And when you walk in there and you realize, yeah, I ain't as good as that guy. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's so that's my like two cents on, on Jim Helwig. Uh, again, though, left a huge mark on the business. A lot of fans are going to remember that character for a long, long time. Uh, but you're right with Steve. Like he, the, I would watch him and we, you know, we traveled in UWF, me, him, uh, Brad Armstrong and Tim Horner <laughs> ran those roads together. And, you know, we, the, the, you know, eight, 10, 12 hours in the car <clears throat> and excuse me, uh, it, the conversations were about just that, you know, learning this or learning, Hey, tonight I did this and that didn't work. And, uh, you know, there was a lot of that kicking stuff back and forth. So I, I give Steve a lot of credit. Like I said, not easy. If it were easy, everybody would do it. And, uh, you know, it's come up with that character that's going to create millions of bucks for you and your family and, and, uh, millions of fans around the world knowing you, you, you go to any country and ask anybody ever heard of sting. You know, sure, the guy with face paint, and whatever, and you know they're going to be able to cite his title runs, the matches with flair, and all of that. So, uh, again, not an easy thing to do, and and kudos to Steve, C- career well done. <laughs>